The next article is titled, quote, Kamala Harris wasn't allowed to fail up like a white boy, end quote. It was written by Terrell Germain Starr and published over at The Root. Do you remember how Frederick defended Kamala by saying, yeah, her campaign was flawed, but which campaign isn't flawed? Well, Terrell's entire article is just him making that same stupid argument again, and since I've already debunked that, I'm not going to go through the entire thing. I'm instead going to skim past most of it and respond only to the dumbest points. With that being said, here we go. A lot led to Kamala Harris's campaign collapsing before the first ballot was cast in the Iowa caucuses. But arguably what doomed her chances was her struggle to disprove she was not the lockham of prosecutor many critics accused her of being. Much will be written and researched about Harris's campaign, especially how black women fare in national campaigns, but much of the conversation has been centered around the possibility that a time as San Francisco prosecutor and California's attorney general, i.e. Kamala is a cop, made her campaign dead on arrival. If we are holding Harris to such a high threshold on criminal justice, Joe Biden, Pete Buttigieg, and Michael Bloomberg shouldn't be in the race either. All of the aforementioned men have a poor record with black voters, but what is particularly startling is that neither of them endured the interrogation of their record with black voters as long and vigorously as Harris. Immediately after the senator entered the race, the columns critiquing her time as a prosecutor followed and never really stopped. Once again, as I stated a couple minutes earlier, you're just flat out wrong. There are tons of incredibly popular political pundits out there who are going after every awful candidate that's running in the race. Stop pretending like Kamala was the only one getting shit on. Also, I'd like to see all of this non-stop criticism Kamala was getting in the media. Both Frederick and Terrell insist that she was getting article after article slamming her but I've never seen any evidence that this was the case. Hell, if anything, the mainstream media was trying to prop up Kamala Harris. Need I remind you guys that CNN once ran a pro-Kamala ad on their channel and passed it off as a news segment. If that's not shady enough, look at all the smearing Tulsi Gabbard was the victim of after she called Kamala out. Dozens of political outlets and journalists labeled her as an apologist for Bashar al-Assad, the brutal dictator of Syria, just for meeting with the guy and trying to make a peace deal with him to prevent America from going into another dead-end regime change war in the Middle East. Kamala Harris herself threw this baseless accusation at Tulsi. Remember the interview Kamala did with Anderson Cooper that I referenced way earlier in this video? Well, allow me to finish reading what Kamala had to say about Tulsi. So I did expect that I might take hits tonight. But you know, listen, this coming from someone who has been an apologist for an individual, Assad, who has murdered the people of his country like cockroaches. She who has embraced and been an apologist in a way to refuse to call him a war criminal. I can only take what she says and her opinion so seriously. So you know, I'm prepared to move on. Yeah, Kamala deflected the criticism Tulsi gave her by accusing Tulsi of being an Assad apologist. This is despite the fact that Tulsi has repeatedly explained that she isn't an Assad apologist. I asked Kamala Harris about that exchange. She certainly seemed, I don't know, I guess surprised uh, that I think she was not expecting that from you. Uh, it, the only thing really she said about you is she said that you were essentially an apologist for Bashar al-Assad. Uh, that you would never criticize him as a, uh, you know, a dictator or a murderer. I think it's unfortunate and a disservice to voters in this country that she resorts to cheap smears rather than actually addressing her record, the issues that I've raised, and the fact that she said she is proud of this record. If that's the case, then voters deserve to hear about why she's so proud of the lives that she has negatively impacted, the families that she's torn apart in California. If uh, if voters are wondering, what is your take on Bashar al-Assad? What do you say? My take is one of a soldier, where I've seen the cost of war firsthand. In Iraq, serving in a medical unit every single day, confronted with that high human cost of war. So I will never apologize for doing all that I can to prevent more of my brothers and sisters from being sent into harm's way to fight counterproductive regime change wars 
that make our country less safe, that take more lives, and that cost taxpayers trillions more dollars. So if that means meeting with a dictator or meeting with an adversary, absolutely, do you, I would do it. Do you understand the not wanting to get involved militarily, uh, and, 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 and certainly as a veteran, you uh, have more of a right than anybody to, to talk about that and have an opinion about it. Just, uh, uh, just on a factual basis, uh, Bashar al-Assad is a murderer and a torturer. Do you not agree with that? Do you, you, I don't dispute that. You don't dispute that, okay. So, can you guys please stop spreading the bullshit narrative that Kamala was a victim of anything other than her own hubris? Because you're starting to piss me off. We were fully justified in our exploration, but none of her actions as a law enforcement official should have disqualified her from the race, given the current candidates who have troubling histories with black people. Kamala Harris had many issues with her campaign, but so does everyone else running for president. Failing up is common in American politics, especially for white men. Oh my god, that is not a good argument. What Terrell and Frederick are basically saying is that Kamala didn't deserve what happened to her because she was a black woman, and the candidates who are still in the race are white and worse than her. In fact, according to Terrell, not only did she not deserve having to drop out of the race, she deserves to fail up and be president because of her skin color. Let me explain to you guys the point that you're both missing. Kamala wasn't allowed to fail up because her record was just too awful for people to ignore. It had nothing to do with her race. As for the white candidates who are equally as bad as Kamala, if not worse, still being in the election, the issue isn't that they're white men and that America has some racist double standard. If that was the issue, Barack Obama would have never been elected president. The real reason that Michael Bloomberg and Joe Biden have been allowed to stay in the race, despite how shitty their records are, is, well, there are two answers. One. Most people do not keep up with politics, so they tend to support a candidate who is the most recognizable to them. For example, Joe Biden was Barack Obama's vice president, and people who aren't very informed about Biden's positions will vote for him because he's a familiar face. That's why he is leading in the polls. Two, these candidates have money, so they can dump millions upon millions of dollars to plaster dozens of campaign ads on TV and get all of their cronies in the mainstream media to prop them up because they're going to continue to make things better for the rich and worse for the poor. Michael Bloomberg is the perfect example of this. The guy spent a hundred million dollars on advertising his campaign and he's surging in the polls because of it. He's effectively bought his way into the election. He shouldn't be able to do this, but unfortunately, thanks to how corrupt our electoral system is, he can. You shouldn't be bashing people by calling them racist because they called out Kamala Harris for being a terrible person. That's not only a terrible argument, but it shockingly doesn't help heal the political divide that currently exists in this country. I mean, what you should be saying is, hey, Kamala Harris dropped out. Now let's focus on getting these other shitty candidates to drop out too. You, you can get a lot more done if you're willing to talk with people instead of talking down to them. Everyone has something in their personal and professional past they take back if they could. A vote they'd reverse or a more progressive outlook they wish they would have embraced sooner. But no one can reverse time. We're often left with candidates to whom we have to extend some grace. They are allowed to fail up. Except, that's starting to change. Sure, back in the 90s you might have had a point, but this isn't the 90s anymore. People on the left are finally starting to have some standards for what kind of candidate they want representing them in this upcoming election. And Kamala Harris didn't make the cut because, say it with me everybody, she sucked. Because in politics, you will fail and do things that hurt and anger people, no matter how unintentional. So, explain to me exactly what was unintentional about Kamala Harris jailing mothers for truancy and keeping Daniel Larson in prison for a crime that he didn't commit. That shit seems pretty intentional to me. Every white man who has run for office failed and was given space to grow through it. One could also argue that the more white boys fail, the higher they rise. 
That must be why Anthony Weiner and Roy Moore are still major players in American politics, right? Without question, Kamala Harris should still be in this race. On paper, Harris checks all the boxes. California Attorney General, US Senator, Howard Graduate, Trailblazer. All things considered, she was amongst the cream of the crop. The cream of the crop. The woman who refused to jail bankers responsible for defrauding millions of people out of their homes and then took money from those bankers for her Senate campaign. That woman, the one who laughed about legalizing marijuana and continued to let people be jailed for smoking weed, that woman was the cream of the crop. Can I get an F in the chat for this man's common sense? Because that has clearly died. But sometimes, the cream doesn't always rise to the top, especially the black kind. Damn. Who wants to be the one to tell him that we had a black president just a couple of years ago? So, those were... I'm not really sure what those were, actually. What can we learn from Frederick and Terrell? I guess the most important lesson I could impart to these mainstream media hacks is that they basically need to stop looking at everything through the lens of identity politics. Kamala Harris didn't drop out of the election because of racism. It was because she was a shitty candidate with awful policies and a terrible voting record. If you're going to insist that that isn't the case and that she should be president simply because of the color of her skin, then guess what? Donald Trump is going to have a pretty easy time getting re-elected. I'm Alex the Critic, and I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you guys next time. I'm gonna roll myself up in a big ball. Yeah.